My name is what? My name is who? My name is Chicky Chicky Slim. Mitchell, drop a mic. If I had a mic, that'd be great. Uh, cool. On today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to motion on your camera, if you have a camera, and on one of these guys, if you guys have a GoPro. I'm going to show you how to slow down to get that buttery smoothness that I seem to really enjoy. And if you don't know that I enjoy it, I have an example here of some slow-mo goodness. I'm also going to have another example right here because I fucking love slow-mo. There is something about it that is just the best, in my opinion. So yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to do it on a GoPro and on a SLR mirrorless camera if you guys have one. So, uh, Without further to do, actually, am I uploading a video on a Wednesday? Yeah, I'm gonna upload this video on a Wednesday, cause fucking why not? Actually, I don't know. Let's see how we go though. It might be on Wednesday, it might be on Friday, who fucking knows? Anyway, let's go. <laughs> Now to start things off, I am going to use the GoPro Hero 7. Uh, I'm just going to film some bikers. I'm going to hang this GoPro up in the trees, which I think will be pretty cool. So uh, before I hang it up in the trees, I will just quickly go through the settings of the GoPro to what I think is best for filming slow motion on a GoPro. Cool. So here is my uh, GoPro Hero 7. Uh, and so we will be wanting to film video. So if you go into the settings, go to your uh, uh, resolution and frames per second. So obviously my camera is going to be completely still, so I don't really care about hyper smooth. So <laughs> you can click on the frame section here and you can actually, I oh know anyway, as soon as I click 120 frames a second, it's going to say it's not supported. So 120 frames a second pretty much means that there's going to be 120 frames per second. Like that, and that, so that means that there's going to be a lot of frames during that one second. So you'll be able to slow it down and there won't be any judderiness because there's that many frames in that one whole second. Uh, the GoPro actually can shoot even slower. So we'll start with the slowest it can do at 1080 because I just like that, which is 240, which is ridiculously slow. That is some like super slow motion. So we'll start with that and then uh, we'll show you, I'll show you then what else um, 120 frames a second looks like because there's a pretty big difference between the two. Cool. So another thing that is probably important and like, I don't know, this is up to some people, but shooting with ProTune on, so you can just control the settings. Usually if you're shooting at 240 frames per second, you want to double that for your shutter speed. So I technically should shoot at a uh, shutter speed of 1 480. Um, and then, you know, you can play with the rest of it, like your ISO to see how much um, frame, I mean, sorry, how much light you let in. And because I want it to be moody AF, we're just gonna drop that ISO because I don't want any artificial, no, you piece of shit. I don't want it on GoPro. Oh, yeah, I want it on flat color, but ISO, 100, and then ISO max, drop him down as well to 100, just so it's nice and dark, and we ought to bring that back in post. Uh, but yeah, so besides that, guys, that's pretty much all you really want to play with. The white balance is all right at that, because that's like a normal sunny day white balance. And yeah, so let's go shoot 240 frames per second. So I've just got the GoPro set up just there recording. Hopefully we get some riders coming through. I might even move it just a little bit closer just because of how wide the GoPro shoots. Uh, I think we've got time to move it before someone comes. We'll just get him here. Just have a quick look, see what it looks like. It looks all right. I'm even gonna, I'm even gonna just quickly just stop recording and I will, I will quickly turn it on when someone comes through and then I'll turn it back on. Wait, sorry, I'll turn it on when someone comes, I'll run out of the way, but oh fuck, see you later. And then yeah, I actually might even change the ISO settings because this is a little bit darker than what I thought it was right now. I'll quickly just do that.
Wow, would you fucking believe it? There was a bike rider. Wow, that was crazy. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping, I didn't, honestly, I didn't even actually see, here comes another one actually. Go on GoPro, get the shot mate. I, uh, I just really want someone to boost it so like you can actually see like someone in the midair with the GoPro going crazy. Maybe if I just go sit over there and look like I'm taking photos, it might encourage people to go bigger and the GoPro will be able to capture it. Let's do that. Alrighty, yeah, so I feel like we got some pretty decent shots at 240 frames a second. So we will now just quickly change the setting to 120 frames a second, just so you can see the level of how slow 240 is versus what 120 is, and how, you know, you can get some pretty crazy footage on your GoPro if you have one. Cool, let's do it. have a group due uh, in about 10 or so minutes so I think I might wrap it up for now and then when we come back down to my next break I will compare my camera and the frame rates of it here we go that was some awesome oh damn the boys are getting lit boys are getting lit here comes another guy Yeah, the boys, man, I need to get myself a fucking bike pass, hey. Um, my biggest thing is like, I'd like, I really want to get one, but at the same time, like, fuck, like, first time I ever like snowboarded at Whistler, I broke my collarbone, so I could imagine the first time I ever fucking did downhill at Whistler. <sighs> Touch wood, but you know what I mean? Yeah, barely touched it, but I touched it, it's all it counts. Um, yeah, this whole, handheld camera thing it's weird too like I've got the gorilla pot in my hand so it's like I'm just holding it in my palm but anyway yeah so as I was saying I feel like that's enough GoPro footage to compare the difference in like slow motion terms now obviously the Hero 7 does have different frame rates than most of the other GoPros well no yeah definitely does but <laughs> you can still get slow-mo and decent slow-mo on like the four and upwards. So if you guys have a Hero 4, even a Hero 3, you can definitely still get some good quality slow-mo on that. Um, but yeah, so next time we come down here, probably gonna have to film on the GoPro because I'll be filming on this big this big guy. And uh, yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep chatting slow-mo and I'll talk about things on this camera that what I like to do when shooting slow-mo. Cool. Alrighty guys, I am uh, back down. Have about a 30 minute break between the next tour group. So it'll be a good time to uh, shoot some slow-mo on this big dog. And now, um, obviously the Sony is gonna have a completely different quality compared to the GoPro. Just purely sensor size, like this thing is obviously a lot more expensive one and has a lot better <laughs> image sensor than what the GoPro does. But I feel like you can still just get just as good of slow-mo on the GoPro as you can with this. Obviously this you can add a little bit of depth of field and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so I'll quickly just jump into the settings. I'm gonna jump over to my iPhone to do this. Because the GoPro doesn't have, it can't really focus on something. So when you're looking at a computer screen, the GoPro usually is not the greatest. All right, so here in the record settings, I am just gonna change this here where it says 24p 50m. I am just gonna change that to. Oh. I'm gonna change that now to 120p. Sorry that I, you know, get to see me actually change it because I haven't really thought this through and I can't. I need two hands that you hold this camera, so um, we'll do that. Uh, and then if we go out into menu, 
you can see my shutter speed down there. It's at one <coughs> over 125. I'm going to change that just quickly to one <coughs> over 320. Um, I go a little bit more than what the double is just because we are dealing with something that's moving at quite a fast pace. Uh, I'm going to keep the. Oh, I'm going to change that to. Sorry. I'm going to keep the f-stop down as low as possible so I can get some depth of field into the shot and I will change the ISO as well. Oh my god, this is so much more difficult than what I thought. I've also changed now the ISO to 250. Um, and so we'll just record some slow-mo stuff and um, yeah, we'll just compare it. camera on manual focus so I'm choosing the point where the camera should focus what that pretty much does it sort of just gives you the whole uh, it gives you the whole ability to just <laughs> sorry fucking bike is trying to do a fucking YouTube video anyway it gives you the whole ability to set a focus point so Everything sort of is just going to be in focus right now, which... Is sort of good and bad, uh, but you don't get like those nice like bo bokeh focus shots. So like, if you know what I mean, I'll show you the difference. So I'm going to flip this back to autofocus now and um, still the same frame rate. This is just purely just from a filming point of view that obviously what what this camera offers compared to the GoPro and you know these are all things to keep in mind if you are looking you know to buy a new camera and whatnot but it's all stuff for shooting uh, for shooting slow mo Um, for this video uh, my last little tip I am going to show you guys when it comes to uh, shooting and then you know obviously producing slow-mo content or footage uh, is going to be in the computer so I'll uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw that but was, that dude just overtook that dude and it was sketchy out. but uh, I'll uh, so yeah I'll take this home and uh, we'll talk about it oh my god this guy's flying and yeah, so my last uh, little tip on like how to shoot this slow-mo footage is how to produce it. Uh, and that's all in the computer. So uh, we'll, uh, I'll see you back home. Yo, what up guys? We are back home. Uh, and before we, um, <laughs> before we do jump into editing, uh, there's just two important things that I feel like you guys do need to make sure you remember from my how to shoot slow-mo. And that first thing is that it is super important for you guys to make sure that you do double your shutter speed if possible when shooting slow-mo. So whatever your frame rate is, make sure your shutter speed is double it. It's just a rule of thumb. Trust me, you need to do it. It's super important. Uh, the second thing is, especially if you are shooting slow-mo on something that is handheld and it doesn't have inbuilt stabilization, um, because you are shooting at such a large frame rate, uh, you're going to have so many frames, so when you do slow the clip down, it will naturally look nice and smooth. Uh, so, just two things to keep in mind there um, that you know are quite important. And uh, yeah, you just need to know when shooting slow. All right, now before I jump into Premiere Pro, I use Premiere Pro. Uh, obviously, there's other other programs like Final Cut and stuff like that. I, I'm not sure if GoPro, the GoPro editing. Uh, allows you to do what we're going to do. I do know that Final Cut does. Um, if you guys don't have Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, you can 
use a 30 day free trial, then you can make yourself a new email address and use another 30 day free trial, or you can download some cracked version or whatever, or you can just pay for it. Do the right thing and just pay for it. These are all tools, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's just like being a carpenter, you need a hammer. You're like, you're not gonna borrow a freaking Jim's hammer every day. It's just, it's a part of what it is. Right, without anything further to do, uh, let's jump in to Adobe Premiere Pro. All right guys, so I um, I have a pretty basic workflow. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that like to color, coordinate their video clips and stuff like that. I'm, I'm simple, I just chuck my GoPro clips in a GoPro folder and I chuck my Sony clips into a Sony folder and that's pretty much it. All right, so I've already gone ahead and I've grabbed one of the clips that we will be slowing down. Uh, this is one of the clips that we shot that was uh, 240 frames a second. Um, so this is like the super, 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 super slow mo stuff. All right, so what you're gonna do, once you drag it into your sequence, you're gonna right click on that bad boy. You're gonna scroll all the way downtown till you see this show clip keyframes. You're gonna take a right, if it's on the right section, then you're gonna hit time, remapping, and speed. All right, so this is where you're gonna start putting your in and out points for the slow mo to obviously start and begin. Uh, and this is where you know, the magic really happens. So uh, this keyframing, speed ramping is another term that people do use, is to make the transition from normal speed to slow-mo speed nice and smooth and buttery and the stuff you dream about. Well, the stuff I dream about because I freaking love slow-mo. I love slow-mo more than Steph. Wow. I don't love it more than Steph. That was a lie. We love, I love it equally. Slow-mo gives me something that Steph can't. Let's, let's put it that way. Okay, then. <laughs> this is weird. Anyway, so we're just gonna quickly. All right, so I, as I can see in this clip, the guy's already taken off in the air. So I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna have. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna put that first key point there. Key point. Key frame there. And we're just gonna click through. Actually, that's a complete lie because I don't. I just remember that these guys actually don't get a lot of air. So we're gonna just not put it there, and we're gonna slow it down when this kid starts to look at the camera and go, "Holy shit, what's that dude doing over there?" And it's just me being a creep in the trees because I have spare time at work. You you know these guys. Anyway, so I'm gonna put my first keyframe in, and I'm just gonna. And then I'm gonna put my last keyframe in when he turns around and doesn't look at me, uh, just because you can. So that's gonna be my two keyframes. And then pretty much guys, you're gonna go between the little, uh, they look like little footy goals here. So you're just gonna grab the middle post of the footy goal. You're gonna drag that down, All right? And because this, uh, this clip in particular is shot at 240 frames per second, you can technically slow that down to 10%, which is ridiculous <laughs> amounts of slow-mo. All right, so as you can see now, we've got this clip looking like this, and you can see that this line here is like that's the normal speed and then look at that gnarly drop to slow-mo and you don't want those gnarly gnarly drops so you've got these little guys up here some tabs you're just gonna drag that tab out so it makes it a nice little transition down there and you're gonna do the exact same to the other side all right now and now that's slow-mo if we were to play that if we were to play this clip through so we'll go sequence uh render selection it it it, it looks okay uh, you know, it definitely could look better as they go out in slow-mo. So what you can do, you can click on one of the little tabs here and you come up with this little blue bar and you can just roll that fella. Just roll him. And then what that does, pretty much just smooths those edges into the transitions and just honestly just makes it look great. And that's what you want in life. Great looking slow-mo. Well, at least that's what I want in life. So we're gonna go up here, render selection again. And now, oh my God. There is heaven on earth. Well, look at that crazy slow-mo. It is good stuff. Alrighty. So we will uh, we'll do the same for one of the Sony clips. Uh, which one was a banger? Which one was pretty good? I reckon this guy right here looks like he's having a good time. So we'll grab the Sony clip and we'll do the exact same thing. We will click on the right-hand side of him, drag down all the way downtown and we'll click time re uh, remapping speed and it's guys honestly same process just clicking to where you want the slow-mo to start drop yourself a keyframe keep going and i'm going to stop him about there another keyframe 
And because this clip here is only shot at 120 frames a second, you can slow it down to 20%. And we're gonna drop him down to 20%. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna drag those little tabs out. And then we are going to just roll, roll those so the slow-mo looks <laughs> freaking tastic. Uh, and the only reason I'm going up and rendering the selection is because my laptop is slow. And then look at that. That was just beautiful. Ready? We'll watch it again. But oh my golly god! Look at that greatness. But yeah. So that's how you uh, that's how you edit slow mo footage to the best of its ability. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, let me know if you like liked and enjoyed the whole looking at my editing workflow and stuff. I don't know. Like, you guys might be interested. Only one way for me to know is by you telling me. Um, but yeah, uh, hope you guys get out there, shoot yourself some slow-mo. If you do happen to shoot yourself some slow-mo, be sure, I'm telling you, be sure to message me and be like, hey, Mitch or Renoko. I don't know if people know me as Mitch. Let's keep it at Renoko. Oi, Renoko, look at this clip I shot in slow-mo. You reckon it's sauce? I'd be like, dude, that's fucking sauce, man. I fucking love sauce. Sauce is... Sauce is the sauce, you know what I'm saying, sauce? Ah, wow. But anyway, um, make sure you like that video if you like it, and make sure you that subscribe button if that's something you wanna do. Do you ever think it's weird that people tell you to hit things? Make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button. Well, you can't smash it, dude. I'm not gonna punch the subscribe button. Like, <laughs> what do you fucking think this is, dude? Ah, uh, that was really upsetting. I'm pretty sure Peter McKinnon says smash the subscribe button. I really like Peter McKinnon. He makes really quality content. Anyway, um, but yeah, go outside, enjoy, capture, create, and pat every single freaking dog that comes in a 50 meter radius of you. I would. I know you do. I've, I've experienced Stephanie. We are gonna get a quick little side story here. We have been like walking and there'll be a cute dog on the other side of the road and she'll be like, no, no, we gotta go cross the road to pat the dog. I'm like, Steph, we're going, we're not going that way. She'll be like, we're going to cross the road to pat the dog. And I'm like, cool. And that's why I love her. Oh, I have another one. What other one? When I saw that puppy outside the gondola and then I got off and I went to go pat it and then I realized I left my phone and my wallet on the gondola and went back down. Do you remember that? A big white. It was like a puppy chihuahua and I was like, puppy! And the door's here and I just got off and walked straight out. Yeah. Honestly, Steph just has like dog brain and I think like a lot of people do. It's like when you see that like see a nice dog and you completely just switch off because the only thing you think about is going to pat the dog. Tunnel vision. It's like, yeah, it's like full tunnel vision. Dog vision. Oh my God. It's a thing. I had dog vision. Yeah. All right, guys. With enough chit chat. See you in the next one. Bye. I fucking missed. I got nothing. Bye. That also missed. Freaking bye. Oh. Bye. Like and subscribe. <laughs> um.